and welcome to another episode of Chefs and Show Homes. I'm your host, Kristen Reed, and today we are in the Green Zone Gardener in another Devereaux home. Dustin Halverson's gonna meet us later and give us a tour and tell us a little bit more about Devereaux, but right now we're gonna get cooking. So we're lucky enough to have Garrett Rusty Thienes all the way from Shaunavon. So he's gonna teach us uh, a little bit more about uh, what he does out in Shaunavon and show us some really good recipes. So thanks for being here today. Hey, it's my pleasure, absolutely. Yeah, so how's it A little bit of a haul in, but we're here, we're ready to rock. We're ready so. to rock, okay, good. So what exactly are we making today? Um, today we decided to focus on a couple of things that are incredibly Saskatchewan. One is wild boar. Okay. And uh, the other is uh, a speckle park beef, which I've got just here on the right for you. Now, the speckle park beef, what makes it unique is it's actually the only, um, one of the only Canadian breeds that's considered truly distinctly Canadian. Um, and this one in particular is Saskatchewan's breed of cattle. So cool. it is a blend of three or four different breeds. Um, there's some black Angus in there for all the Angus lovers out there. We've chosen it for two reasons. Obviously, a, because it is from Saskatchewan and everything from Saskatchewan is always better, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, and B, because we have local guys that raise it and the meat is outstanding. And you can kind of already see, even on a tenderloin, the amount of marbling and fat that we have to work with here. Yeah, that looks great. So this this is the tenderloin cut. We chose that because we're going to do a tataki with this. Okay. Normally, it's a Japanese style dish, normally done with um, tuna when you see it in North America, yeah. but they do it with uh, beef in Japan a lot as well. Oh, really? So we're okay. going to sear this blue rare. Okay. Um, you guys are going to be brave with me today. and. We're going to confit our wild boar belly, um, which means we're going to basically immerse it in a fat. We've chosen duck fat, so we salt it a little bit, slow cook it for four hours, cube it, and then we'll fry it up. So we're going to get some real tasty Great. flavors and some real tenderness out of that. So Awesome. Okay. All right. So first off, the, what we do is we take the wild boar belly. Um, initially, what we do is we cover it with a green salt. So we mix sure a little bit of um, bay leaf goes into that. We have black peppercorn, white peppercorn fresh herbs, essentially we pulse it all down together and literally make a green salt. There's okay. nothing fancy about it. We rub that on top for 24 hours and we let it cure. And that helps to tenderize the meat a little bit. It helps to bring out the flavor um, and, and it helps to pull a little bit of the moisture out of the meat before we confit it. Because okay. if you mix fat and water, I think we all know what happens. <laughs> okay. So um, at the end result, it doesn't look as pretty right now, but we get our confit belly. So there's a little bit of the fat left on top here. Normally it'd be completely immersed in our pan. We're gonna give that a quick sear and then okay. finish it off in the oven for us. Um, meanwhile, the tataki, we're literally gonna sear probably for a minute and a half each side. Okay. And then let it rest and we'll put it all together. And you're gonna help me do the plating, right? Awesome, okay, yeah, I haven't done that yet. We have to paint today. Perfect. So first thing we're gonna do is get our pan going back here. Okay. Just so we come up to heat, I'll make sure I'm turning the right one on. Everything a little fancier than our gas stoves <laughs> in the uh, in there, and then we just need to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. So All right. I'll get uh, my oil. And so what we use uh, a lot of time in the restaurant, we confit our own garlic as well to use in our, our burgers and stuff. So okay. all of that, um, we use a really nice premium extra virgin olive oil, and we cook garlic really slow. And afterwards, we save all the garlic, but we had all this oil, and so we decided to keep it. And I wish they could smell at home. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's no no smell of vision, but uh, we'll try and waft it towards you guys. But uh, yeah, it's it's got this really rich, sweet, earthy flavor, and it, yeah. it goes beautifully with some of the beef. Amazing. So just a nice little bit of salt and pepper on top. Okay. All right, so we're going to give our beef a quick sear here. You can already see it starting to cook up on the edges for us here. Okay, yeah. We're gonna let it creep up about halfway. But yeah, I, I like to really go simple. My, my philosophy with food at the end of the day, especially having traveled through France and Europe, was, is the KISS philosophy, which is keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And try and pick really great ingredients, try and do as little with them as possible. Um, and hopefully at the end of the day, you mix three flavors and that's that. You got something wow on the plate. And, and it yeah. sounds easy, but it's actually harder to do it with less than more. I right. mean. A good example would be painting or music. You tend to just want to keep adding colors or adding instruments. And, yeah. and it's so much harder to just sit down with, you know, an acoustic guitar and write an amazing song that's really stripped down and really clean. Yeah. And I find cooking very similar to that. It's, it's a lot harder to do it very clean and very stripped down. So we got a beautiful sear now. It is beautiful. Just on the top. Thanks to these fantastic stoves here at Devereaux Homes, right? So you <laughs> yeah. can see that we have 
just a wicked sear and just a nice little blue rare on the outside still for us. Yeah, so we'll let that stand for a minute. And okay. while our pan's still hot, we're gonna grab a little bit of our beautiful pork belly and just start searing that up. And so again, just a quick sear on the Really high. quick on this one, and then we're just gonna finish it off in the oven just to kind of warm it up. It's been confit. So it has been cooked for almost six, seven hours at this point. Okay. So you could eat it cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as good. Okay. Um, we really want to give that that duck fat that's that's cooked into it and the fat in the belly itself time to just kind of render out and get nice and soft and moist and chewy and get all those great flavors again. Wow, fat. But it's nice to have a, a little bit of crunch to kind of match it as well. Noisy. Yeah, a little noisy. So, well, that's kind of sizzling up over there. Yeah. We'll come back over here. Um, so to be tataki, you have to be three things, really. You have to have pickled ginger. Okay. You have to have green onions, and you have to have ponzu sauce. Okay. Okay. So, so if you want to, I'm going to get you just to take the pickled ginger, and I want you to make just some random dots on the plate here. Okay. Bigger, smaller. Try and stay to just the one half. Just the one half? Okay. Yeah, and, and be creative. Have some fun. A little bit of spacing. Negative space is good. Does it matter how many? No, no, not at all. It wouldn't More be the better if I started telling you how you had to do it, right? <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I'm just going to slice up our beautiful... I don't know, I think this is pretty. It's looking great. Is that lots? <laughs> it looks awesome. It's, you know what, no one will complain. Everyone that eats it always says they could always eat tons and tons more, so... Perfect. Is this still good over here? I think we're doing great, yeah. Okay. Now it's looking perfect. See the crunch we're getting on the edge here? Oh yeah. As it cooks up. That crispiness. There's a lot of things when you're cooking um, that we try and balance. One of the big ones for us isn't just flavors, but hot, cold, the texture of the dish, crunchy, soft. All those things tend to play really well inside your palate and can yeah. kind of change the flavor of the dish. So much to consider. We're so just gonna good. slide our beef over now. All right. We've got it sliced nice and thin. I just realized how much sauce I actually put on. It's awesome. <laughs> no, it, it really is. There's no wrong amount of sauce. Sauce is boss. Sauce is boss. Sauce I like is that. Sauce is boss. Okay. So we'll take a little ponzu. If you just want to drizzle it kind of right over the beef. Okay. And you can go a little heavy on that I too if oop. you want. Yeah, that's all it the good flavor. comes out fast. Is that okay? Give it oh, even that's more. That's good? More? Yeah. Okay, oh, good. Crazy. Let it fill the bottom of the plate a bit. We're going to let it run around into the ginger. So we're <laughs> just going to let that kind of swirl around the plate. Oh, it looks pretty with my little dots now. They're really well. It's, you're gonna, we're gonna blow your mind in a second. Now. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a touch of the sesame, and then I want to let you do the the fun ones. So the green onion is everyone's favorite to do. Oh, should I be getting it on the meat? Everywhere, get everywhere. It everywhere. Yeah, why not? So how's that? Is that a lot? It's, yeah, it's why I'm not an artist. <laughs> That's how I paint, right there. So finger painting. That looks amazing. Um, then we add a little cured egg yolk, Interesting. and then when we shave it on top, we get this beautiful bit of yellow. That adds a little bit of extra richness to the meat. Wow. We'll mix in a couple of pickled mushrooms. And a little bit of beautiful pea shoot, which we picked up this morning from Floating Gardens. It's so pretty. Et voila. This is You're done. a chef. Voila. Et voila. <laughs> Jesse Matlock with the Rusty Shovel Landscape Shop here and we're talking about trends in landscaping. What we're talking about today is artificial turf and putting greens. One of the benefits of artificial turf and putting greens are the fact that they're such low maintenance. We're just about zero maintenance and that's a big trend we see nowadays. So why they're low maintenance is there's no cutting and there's no water consumption. So there's no irrigation systems or anything like that to worry about and it's keeping all your water bills down. When it comes to these systems, there's proper ways to do it and you really want to make sure it's installed well. So what you need to do is talk to some professionals to figure out how to do it yourself or hire it out to someone else to have it done for you. And then that'll turn into something like this behind me where you know it's going to last forever. And the other thing with artificial turf and putting greens is just how beautiful they are. You get that year-round green color, especially in the early spring and late fall. And you can sit out your window and laugh at all your neighbors with the yellow lawns when it comes time to transition into winter. I'm Jesse Matlock with the Rusty Shovel Landscape Shop, and these are some trends in landscaping. 
All right, so we're gonna do our final dish now. I'm gonna get your help again with a little of the plating because okay. you did such a great job on the first okay. one. Um, obviously, we showed you our wild boar at the start. We talked about how we cooked it, so our final product's just sitting right here for us. We have a beautiful crust on the top where the pork is rendered. We're gonna add just a touch of romesco. So roasted red peppers, tomatoes, hazelnuts, sherry vinegar, a little bit of bread. Gonna add a bit of heat and color to our plate for us and just a little swipe. So if you wanna do one more and then maybe one in a random direction. Okay. Have some fun. Okay. And then I'm gonna come in behind you. I feel like this is a lot of pressure actually. Like Always. I know how much fun this I've is. I've seen how good you've done, so I thought I had to bring, <laughs> bring the heat this time. How's that? That's perfect. <laughs> And then you want one in an opposite direction? Let's do one like right here through okay. the middle, kind of random. Like idea. Yeah. She's How's hired, that? <laughs> hired, hired. New creator beautiful. coming up. Let's look at it. It looks like art now. It does look beautiful. So now we're going to add just a little bit of our chow chow. And we were talking earlier, one of the big things we do at Harvest is we're really trying to get into bringing back the way our grandparents cooked. And this is one of them. I think everybody used to remember the root cellar they had as kids. Well, we've decided we're gonna start creating root cellars and harvest. And so we're taking, in this dish in particular, there's turnips and rutabagas, onions, celery, cauliflower, carrots, all the good fall vegetables that we get here that we can never really use in time before they all go bad on us. And you can only have so many family potluck barbecues before you wanna probably murder your family anyway. <laughs> but we want to really try and highlight these flavors year round and try and find different ways. So in the spring, we'll bring in ramps from BC. We'll bring in fiddleheads, we'll pickle them. Um, through the summer, rhubarbs and raspberries and everything, and then come fall, obviously, we get a lot more of these. My chef hands, I gotta get in and it Looks so beautiful, I love the colors. Yeah, so basically our colors of fall here. So we have slow cooked confit pork belly. We have root vegetables, turnips, there's some mustard in there because obviously we grow a little bit of mustard in Saskatchewan, carrots, rutabaga, um, cabbage, and then underneath the romesco sauce with uh, tomatoes, which are beautiful right now, roasted bell peppers, um, hazelnuts coming a little bit further in Saskatchewan, but you can't beat the flavor. So yeah. at the end of the day, brand new dish, no one's seen this one yet. You guys are going to be the first oh. ones to taste it. Something we're bringing up for fall right now, um, wild pork belly and pickling. Lucky. Well, thanks so much for uh, making this. This is absolutely beautiful. It's my pleasure. Um, so he will be also sharing the recipe, but make sure you make it out to Shonovan to visit him at the harvest and try this dish for yourself. So thank you so much for um, cooking for us hey, today. Thanks. It was my pleasure. Yeah, and we're going to meet up with him in a little bit, but right now we're going to go and see Dustin and start the tour. So overlooking the largest residential park in the city, we are lucky enough to be at another Devereaux walkout and have Dustin Halverson join us for the tour. Now, I know that you've been on the show before, but maybe someone didn't see the, the first episode. So can you tell us a little bit more about Devereaux Homes and what you guys have been up to? Yeah, we've been, uh, we're, we're first off, we're a local business, um, but expanding throughout Western Canada with our apartment business. But custom homes is what we do best here in Regina. And uh, that was proven once again this year when we were named the uh, Master Awards uh, home Builder of the Year through the Regina and Region Home Builders Association. That's the second time that we've been named the Builder of the Year in uh, 10 years of being exist in existence. And then uh, right after that, we were designated one of Canada's best managed companies uh, by Deloitte. And that was a real special uh, designation for our, our managers and our staff and our customers to really share together. That's really exciting. And now I know too with your rentals you do have an opportunity for your renters to save money that goes towards a Devereaux home, is that right? Yeah, we have an equity program. So 15% of our uh, tenants rent will go towards a discount on a brand new home if they build with Devereaux. So we're not only trying to take care of them in the short term with a great accommodation, but also help them achieve their goal of home ownership in the future. Okay, and now um, building has slowed down a little bit in Regina. Where are you guys currently building? We're building all throughout um, and we've gotten a little bit creative as the times have slowed down from uh, record boom times in 2012, 13, 14. Uh, but now we're, we're taking on projects outside of the city. We uh, One of my favorite custom homes we got to build last year was an acreage overlooking the Lumsden and Craven Valley. That's beautiful. Uh, so we, we've been very uh, open to 
to uh, taking on projects outside the city. But then, of course, we do build here in the Green Sun Gardener, the creeks, uh, and we also are getting into the infill neighborhoods as well, where uh, clients will come to us and tell us which area of the city that they would like to go back and live in. And then we've uh, taken on uh, door knocking for them to try and find out if people with specific locations would possibly sell to us uh, so that we could tear down the home and rebuild um, something really unique in an older neighborhood. That's great. And then speaking of older neighborhoods, um, we're finding that a lot of people are purchasing older, more mature homes uh, with mature yards and then doing high-end renovations. And now you guys are starting to get into that as well too, right? Yeah, that's been something that's definitely come our way. People will say, we love your show home, we love your brand, your reputation, uh, and we, we have a big project uh, that requires us to possibly even move out of the home while the work is being done. So redoing kitchens, adding spaces, uh, and uh, taking on different projects like that in people's existing homes has been something that's been really fun for our group as well. Yeah, and then do you utilize your rental properties to place them while you're doing those large renovations? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, we're so lucky because we do have furnished options, short term, month to month, or longer te uh, term leases. So uh, with our rental portfolio, we've been able to take the stress off the people who are going into a build or a higher end renovation uh, so that they're not worried about matching up uh, accommodations or selling their home yeah. uh, along with moving into their brand new ones. So yeah. that's definitely been a helping hand and I find if we can uh, work with our clients within their budget and also take away the fear of being uh, able to sell in time for their new home or where they're living during the renovation, it makes everything else go a lot smoother. Totally, just that full service for your clients. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So this is a beautiful view, but the house is even more beautiful. So let's go inside and uh, you can show us around. Absolutely. Okay. In this particular home, uh, we're in the master bedroom and this couple works at different hours and a lot of our uh, clients do, you know, whether it's shift work or uh, in the medical field where they're on call and things of that nature. So I'm about to show you the horseshoe of this home where you have the master bedroom, then you uh, go into the ensuite, the walk-in closet and out the laundry room without disrupting the master bedroom once again. So if one of the family members or one of the couple um, have to get up and go to work or something like that. Um, so this, this has become a very popular thing that we've been working into a lot of our two-story plans. But when it comes to the customization of a home, it always starts with budget. And we have to find out exactly what is allowed in their budget because building a custom home is not fun if you're over budget. Right. Everyone gets stressed out and all of a sudden, no matter how the build is going, it's not good enough if it's over budget. So we we very much pride ourselves on working within the budget that the client has. And that starts with uh, then finding the lot. Uh, we're on a lot right now that would be in the $300,000 range, right? It overlooks a 17 acre park. Well, once you make that commitment to the land, you wanna make sure that the, the home brings out the most features of that land as possible. So in this particular home, you'll notice on the main floor, there's lots of extra windows added to the living room and the dining room space. You wouldn't find that in just a traditional stock floor plan. Same here in the master, we wanted to move the master to the back to take advantage of the park view. Um, and yeah, even with the walkout space that we're gonna see in a moment, you'll see that uh, they really wanted to take advantage of the indoor-outdoor flow of entertainment and, uh, and being able to lounge and relax. So those types of things are taken into account when customizing the home. Right, well, and also making sure that they keep resale in mind too and not go too high-end or too customized that they'll never get that value back out if they need to sell in a couple of years as yeah, well. Yeah, and I forgot to bring that up. This yeah. home is six years old. The family of four have been living in here for that long and it still looks brand new. And uh, I think a big part of that is because of how much thought and extra care and attention were put into the selections. Yeah, for sure. Hi everyone, this is Atif with TMG The Mortgage Group. Today we're going to talk about paying off your mortgage sooner. A very common question clients usually ask is, how can I pay off my mortgage sooner? Generally, when you sign your mortgage contract with the bank or lender, ways of paying your mortgage sooner are built into the terms of your mortgage. For example, a common way is the 20% option. 
20% options allow you to put 20% of your mortgage loan in addition to your regular mortgage payment every calendar year without facing a penalty. Another option is the accelerated payment option. In this case, you would be allowed to increase your monthly payment by 20%. The additional payment would go toward your principal amount. Make sure to discuss these options with your mortgage broker to find the ideal lender to suit your needs. This is Atif with TMG The Mortgage Group. So we were talking earlier about the benefits of a walkout and how rare they are in Regina. Can you tell me what are your what are some of your favorite reasons or uh, features of a walkout? Yeah, well, you're right. I mean, obviously, we're in the prairies and Regina is a flat city, so to have true walkouts, uh, which allow for the proper slope so that you don't have a crazy amount of front steps, uh, you know, is hard to find. But in the Green Zone Gardener, we still do have some walkout lots available if you like what you're seeing. But it allows for a uh, second living space. Like right now, we're on a, a patio that's at ground level. It's, you know, kind of windy today, but right here, not even a little bit. And we're shaded. Mm -hmm. um, so some of our clients will actually screen in this area and it becomes almost like a three season uh, uh, place to hang out. Yeah. But um, on the inside, you've got this great flow of uh, entertainment space. You've got the TV and the couch onto a games room or what could be a bedroom. So that, you know, that really is a bright basement. Even on the side windows of the basement, you'll notice they're about three feet high uh, because the grade disappears as you get to the bottom of the, uh, or the back of the walkout. So I think, I think that's what people really appreciate is that the basement no longer feels like a basement and the outdoor living space becomes covered and as you can tell, just out of this world. Yeah, well, and I mean, the landscaping back here is gorgeous. Um, do you guys help your clients with that, or how does the landscaping process work when you're buying a, a walkout? Yeah, well, definitely you have to consider those types of things. Yeah. Um, there could be retaining walls. You have to make sure you're planning for water movement properly. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do standard is two sump pits okay. uh, to help move the water away uh, at two different points in a walkout. So, yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into making the yard work with the home maybe a little more so with a mm -hmm. walkout than a traditional lot so yeah we do work with our partners I know Rusty Shovel is uh, one of the sponsors of the show yep. so people like them uh, will come and help with our clients design and so we can incorporate that uh, when we're planning the build yeah so the functionality obviously of the drainage but then also just pure enjoyment and being able to entertain back here yeah exactly yeah, well, that's great yeah and so now we've seen the entire house from top to bottom and it's uh, it's incredible to, to know that a family's been living here for six years it's in such great condition so um, so yeah so kudos to you guys for building such a beautiful home yeah you know so um, on day one, when you walk through show homes and showrooms and everything looks good day one, and it's no different than a luxury vehicle, uh, we feel like we build a luxury home that over time stands the test of families and our winters and mm -hmm. uh, just family living. And so I think uh, that's something I really was proud to showcase today, that this was a 2013 home that almost looks like it could have been a brand new show home today. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's the piece that uh, from a Devereaux standpoint, we'd want to put out the most to your audiences. There's a reason why uh, we sometimes aren't the cheapest, but this is what you're going to get long term is a home that maintains its resale value and uh, and just becomes uh, that much better of a space to live in over time. Yeah, and I love that you said that value. I think that that's the biggest thing when it comes down to uh, picking your, your finishes and picking your home is great value, not necessarily cheap because you'll pay for that in the long run twice. Well, and finishes are one thing, but the install and the labor, yes. working with um, a builder or a contractor that has those relationships to make sure that you're getting Regina's very best local people who aren't going to leave when the market slows down yeah. to warranty and service their product, but the install is the big thing. You can give me uh, all these building materials, I won't make it look like this. Right. You know, but we do know who can, yeah. and uh, that's the piece we wanted to give uh, as our message today. That's awesome. Well, great information. So thank you so much for uh, being here. We're going to touch back with uh, Dustin and Rusty in a little bit and uh, get to know them a little bit better. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Stan with Dutch King Construction. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about egress windows. 
An egress window is a basement window large enough to be used as a fire escape if need be. The easiest time to install an egress window is prior to finishing the interior of the basement. First off, you will need a city permit along with an engineer's report. Keep in mind that since you are cutting through the basement exterior wall, you will also need to tear out the existing interior wall and flooring. The reason we do this is because the concrete saw creates a lot of dust. I'm Stan from Dutch King Construction. Okay, so we're back with Dustin and Rusty, and we're gonna get to know them a little bit better. Um, so now neither one of you guys are from Regina, right? Not originally. Okay, mm -hmm. so where are you from? Torquay, Saskatchewan. So we basically, between us, have the province covered because <laughs> I'm in the very southeast corner and he's very southwest. That's right, yeah, I'm in uh, Shaunavon, Saskatchewan. So we're literally about 40 minutes off the American border and like 40 minutes off the Alberta border. So right down Cypress Hills grasslands country and if you swung right through there and kept going down to big muddy area, yeah, you'd end up in Dustin's neck of the woods. So okay, well that's fun. And so now you come into town often? Yeah, we with the restaurant we found more and more, and actually we've got a lot of friends now from Regina that have visited us in Shaunavon, so we like to return the favor. And uh, I think I was saying earlier, the chefs too within the city, um, we competed in gold medal plates 2016 and won. Okay, uh, first time I'd ever done anything, and. Uh, we really got embraced by kind of the, the culture within Regina, the chef's culture, and, and we couldn't be more grateful and thankful because we're, we're kind of on an island out um, there. But that's interesting perspective because mm -hmm. I'm not a chef. So um, I actually, like when I hang around guys like this, I'm just interested to hear what they look for. Right. And then, uh, and, and how they can tell, you know, this is better than that or what you want to taste for. Because I think for a lot of people like me who like to go to a nice place, um, they'd like to appreciate the food even more because you mentioned all the talented people locally and there are so many. Um, but for people like myself, I just go in there and want to be able to have an opportunity to taste the difference and understand that. And I think uh, engaging chefs like this guy here, uh, come out and make sure you enjoy what you're eating, why it's different, and what they did different that day. Yeah. And, and that's what's really cool about what you guys bring when you're cooking with the local ingredients and even mentioning where you got uh, different pieces of, of what makes the plate that day. So sure. that's, that's what's really cool that we're spoiled to have here locally. I agree, yeah, and that's part of why I love doing this show so much because it really just opens your eyes to all of the talent that is here and to really understand the ingredients more makes you appreciate it so much more too. So, well, thank you guys both so much for uh, for having us and for being here today to, uh, to cook for us. It's been amazing, so much fun. Um, so come check in again next week when we'll be with a new chef and a new show home.